Now, I've been recording for years. Uh, we always put a microphone in, and then we want to change the gain, make sure the perfect gain is set up for the vocalist or some on turntables. doesn't make a difference. But today, or actually over all these years, I've been using my computer system. It's been based on the 32-bit float processing system. And it makes it easy for us. It gives us a wider range so that I have no problem to worry about gain. And to make it easier, I ran across this article and video I saw online. So I can do anything. Now here I am in MPC. You'll see this audio coming in right here. Right? It's my audio right there. And before I was in Logic, I have audio coming in here. And no problem. Well, this is Dan from Rode the guys that make the microphones in Australia, he'll explain more about the 32-bit processing system and how it works. 32-bit float audio processing is nothing new. Whilst a lot of people are talking about it right now, the DAW you use for recording and editing has been using 32-bit float audio processing for years. At its simplest, 32-bit float allows for a much wider range of audio levels than regular 16 or 24-bit audio. And that's why it's important inside a DAW. When you are adding processing, adjusting levels, and mixing lots of sources together, you need additional headroom to ensure you don't lose any of the audio information. One often used analogy is shooting RAW in video. Raw video represents the image exactly as captured by the camera sensor without any data reduction or processing. This allows for more flexibility in post-production as you have all of the original image information to work with. 32-bit float is much the same. It represents all of the original audio so you have full flexibility to adjust levels in post-production. Although 32-bit float audio processing has been around for many years, until recently, capturing audio in 32-bit float was not possible. Which is why, for close to 100 years, audio engineers have been reaching for the gain knob. That's right, the humble gain knob has been the gateway to high-quality recording pretty much since microphones were invented. It's the first control on a console channel strip and the first thing you need to set in a recording workflow. What that gain knob does is match the sensitivity of the recording system to the volume of the sound being recorded. You can think of it as a sliding window, where the window is the range of audio levels you can successfully record. Record too close to the bottom of the window and your recording will be noisy. Record too near the top of the window and your recording will distort and sound harsh. You slide the window around using the gain knob so it matches the level of audio that you are recording. For quiet sounds, you slide the window down by turning up the gain, so your levels are in that area of high quality recording. For loud sounds, you do the opposite to ensure there's no distortion or clipping. Now, this workflow is so ingrained into audio production, we hardly think about it. It's Audio Recording 101. Indeed, here at Rode, we've made heaps of explainer videos and walkthroughs to show the process in detail. But what if I told you you didn't have to set the gain anymore? You could just start your recorder without doing any level checking at all, and your recording would be perfectly captured that you could record everything from a whisper to a jet engine and never have to worry about setting the gain. This is what 32-bit float recording does. It uses a clever technique at the preamp stage that stacks multiple digital converters on top of each other and then combines their output into a 32-bit float bitstream. Like shooting raw video in order to capture the full information from the image sensor, this audio technique captures the full output of the microphone capsule with no compromises. So, once you have made your recording in 32-bit float, what do you do? Because you've captured all of the information from the microphone capsule, you can then effectively alter the gain of your recording after you've made it. That's right, it's like being able to set the gain in exactly the right spot after you've made your recording. Again, think of the sliding window analogy. After you've made your recording, you can open it in your DAW and slide the window to get optimal audio levels simply by turning the gain up or down. 
Things sound a bit quiet, slide the window down to get a good level. Things are too loud and sound distorted, slide the window up and the distortion will go away as the window now matches the louder levels. This completely takes the guesswork out of setting gain as you can set it perfectly to match your audio source in post-production. And if your audio recording has some sections that are very quiet and some sections that are very loud, you can adjust the gain of each section independently to optimize your recording. It's quite a revolutionary thing in audio production that you no longer have to worry about setting the gain when you start recording. No more hoping your talent doesn't suddenly speak a, a lot louder on the take than they did in the sound check, and no need to grab the gain knob when an audio source is quieter than you expected. Just hit record and then adjust the gain in post-production, just like you might adjust the EQ or the panning. However, it's this aspect of 32-bit float recording that seems to confuse some people. Audio engineers have been setting the gain at the start of recording sessions for a very long time, and I think some of them struggle with the concept that 32-bit float recording has literally made the gain knob obsolete.